Um, hey you, it's a me, a Marcello. Are you looking for a great place to eat lunch or a dinner? Then go right now to Hot Rods. They have delicious a pizza, cheese sticks, spaghetti, wings, a salad bar, and a more. You can eat in, carry out, or get the delivery. On a busy night tonight, Jamie Hughes. Been a while, but well, welcome back. Oh, man, looking forward to it. A special night raining outside, so that meant the baseball players, Coach Dameron wasn't able to practice them all night. We're going to have some of them come join us. Uh, and, oh, by the way, there's a coaching search going on down in Lexington, Kentucky. Have you got a call about it yet? I ain't got a call, but I've seen Joe Kraft's airplane flying around town all day. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's going to be a fun, fun show for us. We're going to talk a little dirt track race. And, of course, we're coming off the third annual Hometown Sports Corner uh, Mountain All-Star Games over in Pippa Passes, Kentucky. And, uh, James, it's, yeah, it's kind of just uh, – you'll have to turn dirt. that audio. There you go. Yeah. Who you uh, – where you want to start off first, my friend? Man, we, just, we might as well talk, uh, talk about the, the ghost in the room, man. Who's going to be UK's next coach? Mark Pope? Well. Billy Donovan? Do we, Billy Gillespie. Do we start off with, has anybody been offered the job? I, I don't know. You talk to one person, and they say everybody's turning it down. You talk to another, and they say they ain't even been offered the yeah. job yet. I, I, don't, I don't know who's been offered or if anybody's been offered. I mean, it, it's crazy, you know. Even last week, you know, I'm sure that it's a, it's a long process than what we're used to. You know, we think we just pick up a telephone and say, hey, you want the cookie job. You but say sure that, but listen, we had $33 million. We were going to fire him a month ago. Surely we had a backup plan. No, we didn't. I, and you know me. I've not been a Calipari fan since he kneeled. Uh, I, I don't think – I think the man is probably the best recruiter in the nation, but me and you could coach like he coaches. Well, and then it's a, it's a fact. If you backtrack it, when he lost his assistant coaches, he went downhill from yeah. that. And so somebody was doing a lot of things right that we didn't realize and he was getting credit for or – and then, too, I will say this in his defense, the game's changed. Forty people started in the final eight. Yes, in the final eight, there was, there was 40 starters. See you, Brother Jordan. Of those 40 starters, two of them were freshmen. The other 38 starters yeah. in the final eight were upperclassmen. The game has changed some since he started. It is changing. If you go back with, with Twitter and on all the social media, if you follow along, you know, that was his – Excuse every year, we're young, we're young. Well, whose fault is it you're young? You. It's, it's his. He's it, the one that would recruit them, you know, recruit the one and done. You know, for three, four years, that was fine. Yeah. Uh, but then the uh, the transfer portal opened up, and then the, uh, the junior transfers opened up. The JUCO colleges got better. The, the game got stronger. It kind of went away from the fast-paced game now to back to what it was when me and you was growing up, the physical, more mature game. But for all of you guys that were big Cal fans, and I was to an extent, we got beat out of the NCAA tournament in the first round by Oakland. The scouting report on Oakland was stop the three. You had one job to do, and we didn't do it. Oh, we didn't do it. No. Well, we didn't do it in the SEC either. Well, the it SEC tournament NCAA don't matter, tournament. though. Yeah, if you remember, it, it, don't, it does it, matter. It, well, it didn't to him. Hey, guys, in the <laughs> comment section, tell us who you think the next coach should be. And then put a couple dots and tell us who you think it will be. Now, uh, Nick Danner already says it's James Salmon. So, well, I, I you know, I, I'm, I would is that take, your neighbor? Listen, or? I would make <laughs> the University of Kentucky this deal, Jamie. If they offered me eight million dollars a year, I would sign the contract and I would have a clause that they could keep looking for a real coach. I would, I would take, I would take their money, and, and they could fire me at any time. Kind of like when want. I used to substitute teach. I'll just take the you one. You go check. in with a movie, and we're gonna watch a movie. <laughs> Yeah. As long as you're good, I give you one hall pass. That's it. Yeah. You come back with my hall pass. Down. I mean, I go in knowing they're still looking for a coach, and I sign the contract. Well, there's actually one of those. We'll talk more about that. But again, I don't want to talk too much. Um, Jason Hall says Billy D. I hope Jason. I need you guys hit that like and share button. And also, Jason, you watch us enough to know does the what? sound sound okay? Somebody let me make sure. I'm a little paranoid about that. You all know how I am. I want to make sure they can hear us loud and clear. Uh, we got to order us up some food here in just a little bit. But but tell me uh, real quickly, and then we'll we'll dive deeper into it. Yeah. If I give you the check, who you hire? Right now? Period. I, I think Billy Donovan. I mean, I really like Billy Donovan. I think he can get back in the game. The only thing that scares me about Billy Donovan is he's been out of the college game for so long. 
I think he kind of start, has to start from fresh on the recruiting trail because he's been in the professional. But I think if he comes to Kentucky, I think Shepard stays at Kentucky because I'm not mistaken, I, and I very well may be. Donovan was probably an assistant when his dad played at Kentucky, so there's already that relationship. I think that probably Billy Donovan reaches out to John Pelfrey and says, you ready to go back to Lexington? Brings a Kentucky guy on the sideline that knows the program with him right away. Um, I think if, you, if you're looking for a coach, I mean, I would give it to Billy Donovan. You, you, you know, everybody's screaming, Patino, 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 and I would love to have Rick Patino. But let's be real. He's 70, what, three, 74 years old. I do have a way. We'll you, talk you about it later as to how most. I could bring Patino. You, I got a way. I got a route that well, I could bring him. You, but – you couldn't give him more than three years. Who's your, who's your I mean, mine's uh, Billy Donovan. When I wanted the guy up at UConn, he's crazy enough to, to get the job done. Well, if the contract that they offered him, is, he's got to be crazy to turn it down. A hundred million dollars? That's generational change money. I mean, that's changing your kids and your grandkids and your great-grandkids And, oh, money. by the way, people, when you come to Kentucky, you get the endorsements that you're not getting anywhere else. Yeah. This is just in the contract. Yeah. We're not talking about what Nike's going to give you and what they're going to give you uh, on Bourbon Street and what yeah. you're going to get from Papa John's or no, you're right. Hot T- Rods or TV whatever. TV time from ESPN and yeah. SEC Network and everywhere you go, you know, you're going to go to Malone's and, and get a dinner named after you right away. I wonder where they take the Calipari and off the Malone's menu. I don't know. You I'm know, not he, ordered the, it. The, the Calipari that. chicken is pretty good at Please Malone's. tell me it's not a New York strip because that's my favorite down well, there. That's what me and if you it's had Calipari, at the state tournament. It I was good. Ordering. But yeah, anyhow, we uh, yeah, let's, we let's talk about the hometown sports corner, Mountain All-Stars. Uh, we started off on Thursday night with yeah. the boys' action, fifth and six, freshman, sophomore, junior, and seniors, and uh, had a good turnout. Man, I had a good turnout. Probably over 100 kids on campus last week over at Alice Lloyd College. Um, inside the Coach Jay Court with Coach Cornett and Coach Mills and, and President Stepp and, and – uh, Everybody, all the alumni from Alice Lloyd, man, was it was a super good time, and and the hospitality that they put on Alice Lloyd College is top notch. Every time we go over there, third annual, and the first time we had it, we gave the money. And it was a little concession money. It's pretty much what it was. That went to the youth group where I pastor. Yeah. Second year we had it, we raised about four thousand bucks. One hundred percent of that went to the Knott County Long Term Recovery. Our buddy Tim Short matched that, so we were able to give them a little over eight thousand mm-hmm. bucks. This year, uh, knew some, some, we knew going into it, new expenses, some things. Alice Lloyd charges us nothing. Yeah. But with the insurance, officials, more games, more trophies, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we had some cost, but we we're happy to say, Jamie, we still yet are going to be able to give away four scholarships. Yeah. We're pretty happy about that. Absolutely, man. You're going to be able to uh, give, help four kids across the mountains go to college. And, you know, that was the uh, one of the reasons that we would do this. All-Star Games to be able to give back in the community in some way, in some form or fashion. And and this year it starts, you know, just put, it don't end with four. That's just where we're at right now. Of course, hopefully we can keep it going. And at four, next year will turn into eight. And the year after that it'll be 16. And hopefully we can just keep help, helping more kids across the mountains go to college. Uh, but with that also, we had some good basketball games. Uh, big, big shout-out, fifth and sixth grade All-Star MVP Prater from over there, uh, we found out Nick Prater's baby brother is quite talented yeah. as well. Cole's going to be a good little ball player with him. Uh, yes, had sir. a bunch of good kids in there last week. and then, uh, But I think the most excited people at the end of the night was uh, John Mills and Scott Cornett by the time campus was over because they were smiling, shaking hands when we walked out of the gym some nights. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then on uh, Friday night, we had the girls' games, and uh, we enjoyed those thoroughly. James, actually, let's – I know this was the plan to start off the show, but mm-hmm. the pictures that I want to show, I probably have to bring those up on one of the phones that we're filming with. And I didn't realize that at the time. This is new to us. We've never been live on a location, if you can't tell. Uh, that's why I had to make sure that everybody says we're sounding good and so forth. But with the newness, uh, let's how about we take a commercial break and then let's come back. And we'll finish the show off at the end of the night talking about that All-Star game a little more. I want to show some of those pictures. Uh, but uh, you got a list of topics, and uh, we got the baseball guys here. We won't keep them too long, but we got some baseball down at Cordia to talk about as well. And so maybe we come back and kind of talk about some things going on down in the lines then. Yeah, let's, uh, let's step away, but let's thank all the radio stations that's got us tuned in across eastern Kentucky tonight. We'll start with, obviously, the Killer Beat, WKCB 107.1 out of Hyman. 
107.7 W299AS out of Hazard, 103.7 WCB, WCBJ out of Campton, 106.5 WRLV out of Sayersville, 102.9 WLKS out of West Liberty, 106.1 WMOR out of Moorhead. And of course, you can find us on the Hometown Sports Corner Facebook page, WKCB, or our Hometown Sports Corner YouTube channel, Jamie. We are live on there tonight. I found out this week people have kind of explained more to me why the YouTube channel is so important. So many smart TVs out there. Now, a lot of people, of course, have even cut the cable, they say, but they have YouTube. And uh, so anything we do going forward will be also on YouTube. And so that's that's a big plus there as well. But, again, can't say enough about Sean Dameron and the Bat Pats being in here. They've already placed their order. Can you believe the boys ordered a cheese pizza? Who gets a cheese pizza? Well, you know, up, up until uh, – But then again, if they're eating cheese pizzas before their games, then don't change the way the season's going, fellas. You yeah. eat cheese pizzas yeah. every night. Whatever they're doing, I want them to keep doing because, man, they're having themselves a good season. Man, they're having themselves a good season, getting ready to play in the 2A uh, Section 8 championship coming up. Uh, hopefully tomorrow night if, if, if the, it'll quit raining. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm sure that they'll find a field to play on somewhere. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, we need to order, too, because Vance Hurley says he's here. I don't know if that means in the parking is lot. He? or He says, don't worry. He's, he was in Brooklyn, New York. I thought he was in New York. Yeah, Probably he's up there. Eating. But anyhow, yeah. he's tuning in. At least we know that. You guys hit the like and share button. In the comment section, tell us who you think the U.K. coach should be and also who you think it's going to be. Okay, uh, he says ah, he's still in New York. I got. Yep. I thought he was out in the parking lot. I so we got a few more minutes. I thought he was over on BLD Mountain looking over. Hey, Tyler, back at the station. How about a two-minute break? Two-minute break, and we'll be back to talk more right here on Sports Talk with James and Jamie. Hey, you. It's me, Marcello. Are you looking for a great place to eat lunch or a dinner? Then go right now to Hot Rods. They have delicious pizza, cheese sticks, spaghetti, wings, a salad bar, and more. You can eat in, carry out, or get the delivery from four great locations. Heinemann, Hazard, Allen, and Betsy Lane. That's a hot rod. It's the best place this side of Italy. Mwah! Addiction is a disorder. We treat and we manage addiction like any other disorder. The issue touched me when I start seeing more and more young families fighting addiction, start having babies born with an addiction issue. When we have a great outcome, when we see that person coming back on their feet, working and producing and providing for their families. That's the best outcome. It makes you feel that you're doing something right. Nelson Frazier Funeral Home is proud to sponsor tonight's sporting event. Nelson Frazier has the highest quality American-made funeral products, cremation services, mausoleum, and memorial markers, all with a family budget in mind. With three chapels located in Hyman, Martin, and now in Prestonsburg, Nelson Frazier Funeral Home is local people serving local families. Home streets of glory. If your car's in a mess, take it to the best. That's Hometown Garage, located in Pine Top, Kentucky. Buster Sloan and Donnie Combs have been in the business for years. Welcome back to Hyman, Kentucky, Hot Rods Pizza. James Sandlin and myself here in here for Sports Talk. And James, we'll say again how much we appreciate Coach Sean Dameron and the Bat Pats being in here. Fellas, how you doing tonight? Good, how are good, you? How about you? Uh, doing good. Still trying to figure y'all out on this cheese pizza. Where in the world did this come from? What in the world you got against pepperoni, sausage, and ham? You know, I'm a meat lovers type of guy. Uh, <laughs> I think that it's all them that ordered the cheese. They know, already right? ordered for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't beat a cheese pizza. Well, I mean, and like I said, whatever you guys are doing, keep doing it. All right? And let's talk a little bit about the season as we get to uh, how's things going so far for those that don't know. Pretty good season. Yeah, I mean, we're – we're starting to piece it together, getting better every game, you know, riding this guy at the plate, 
just get on base and let them knock us around them. So we've been getting our runs the past few games. We just try to get better every day, just take it day by day. And, of course, been swinging the bat really good as a team. And then particularly, uh, I know you've uh, already got a couple uh, keepsakes. Yeah. And that's got to feel good, man. Oh, yeah. Just been doing it since I was a kid, and it just feels good to see it go over that fence. Fellas, looking forward. You know, we're halfway through the season now. Um, you know, I know Coach Dammer, Coach Lee, last year was up there a bunch, and uh, – I know that you all you like getting dirty on the on the field. You, if you walk out of there with a clean uniform, you ain't doing it the right way. I, I promise you that. Um, let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the two A championship. First time I think in school history that we're going to the championship game in Knox County Central. What's that mean? Being y'all senior year, going, got got the opportunity to be, to be the first. You know, you, there there can never be another first. You know, just starting to trying to start knocking some goals off the list. You know, two A's the first one, so. If that makes us the first, then great. I'm glad that we can glad we can do that. But we're really just focused on trying to accomplish what we want to get done, starting with the two A. Just really grateful to be on this stage, and uh, they do a great job sponsoring these events, and uh, just happy to play baseball with the guys. Really, fellas, uh, when you talk about things that you're checking off, how cool is it to get to play at Knox Central and have the facilities and the coaches and the things you've got, I mean, you know you're going to be given the tools to succeed, and that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we've all, we've, since I've been here, we've had a great support staff from older players and coaches to facilities being top notch. I mean, look at our field, and you can just tell that it, it put countless unseen hours in working on the field and keeping everything top notch for us. I mean, we've got the support, so on us to go and do it and we just get it done yeah on what parker was saying we got top-notch facilities and it's just uh not uh baseball in not county has always been a big staple and just really fortunate to be a part of this program well, that's what i was gonna say when you roll up on the hill you know the first thing you see when you roll up on the hill is a big sign that's got district championships region championships and i have an opportunity now we can put a new uh lettering on there with a two-way if, if we're fortunate enough to get there but, you know, I want to talk about going forward, you've got a bunch of underclassmen on the team this year. Uh, Parker, I'll let you go first. You know, what, what when the season's over this year, what do you want the younger players to look and say, man, I learned this, this, and this from Parker Williams? You know, I mean, if they can just realize that you can get it done if everybody's on the same page and everybody's got the same goal and everybody trusts each other to – do their part and know like you got to just know that your teammates got your back teammates going to do their part you go out there and do yours and that'll take care of it that's how you win what about you Jaden? uh just hard work every day nothing's going to be given to you and uh just if you play the game the right way it'll take care of you like coach Dameron says man how cool is it too to have kids like your little brother looking up to you and uh, uh that middle school program's got a lot of success shout out to them and then of course our uh feeder programs uh, for whatever, Babe Ruth, Little League, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call that. Little now. League. I, I'm pretty proud of that. I know you are too, man. Yeah, I mean, they're always looking up to us, and uh, they're, they're having a great year in middle school. I think they're undefeated right now. And uh, I think Knox County baseball will be good for years to come, yeah. Yeah, we got some we got some young studs that are, I mean, putting in work every day with us, seeing what we do, and they'll keep doing it as soon as we step out. When you first started the game, uh, who did you – I won't ask you this question now, but back when you were in third, fourth grade, who did you want to be like? Who did you look up to as a baseball player? I want to, I want to pat my game like whoever. Do you, like, does this go up to like major league? Yeah, level? yeah, for sure. Derek Jeter. Jeter, that's interesting. Uh, I always, uh, I like King Griffey Jr. I think he had the prettiest swing ever, and because uh, he did. Yeah, he caught him the kid. Because <laughs> he did. Yes. Yeah, he's just a stud. And, uh, Looked up to him a lot. I think they both done some homework, man. Yeah, I think they did too, man. Uh, Jitter's got a few rings and a whole bunch of money yeah. to go with it. <laughs> a whole bunch of money. A whole bunch. Maybe yes. it's what we can pay Kentucky's coach to come, a whole bunch of money. And uh, Griffey Jr., the only thing bad about his story is how did we ever let him out of Cincinnati? Uh, well, that's a whole, that's <laughs> another a whole story. Other show you know by I mean? itself with the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, you're right. We, we get to where we're competitive, then we trade everybody. Yeah. Um. Well, let me ask you a question here off the top topic. 
Uh, me and Jamie's asked this a few times let's, all let's year. Let's get ready. No, 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 no. We're not going to those questions yet. Okay. If you've got to have one guy on the whole team take a test tomorrow, and your everybody's grade relies upon this one person, who's taking the test? You go Collins. First. Yeah, yeah. Collins. 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 Well, I, he's over nodding his head as he says, "Yeah, he got, yeah." He says, mean, he's the one who got the cheese pizza. <laughs> he, he might. He's got to work on a mustache, though. I mean, uh, but yeah, Parker. I mean, Austin's going. Austin's a good guy. Definitely not one of us, though. No. I mean, I, I think I could pass it if it's like <laughs> math, but give me some like history, and there's no way. Hey, fellas. Uh, if you're taking the trip, you're going to Pike Central tomorrow night, hopefully yes, weather permitting. Mm -hmm. So, time you get done, about an hour back, and you're wanting to text your girlfriend good night, and then you want to go to sleep, who's going to be the one person ain't going to let you sleep on the bus? Probably us. us. <laughs> you yeah. too? See, y'all better than me. I would have said, said squeaky. <laughs> squeaky. I guarantee you, I would have said Jade squeaky. Nambergen. Yeah, Jade or, or Jay Nambergen. <laughs> What's been – so far, what's been your favorite moment as being a Knott County Central Patriot? Going to the LA State Tournament my freshman year. That's and pretty cool. When we do it again next week, then that'll take the spot. How about you, brother? That's a tough one. Uh, probably, this, is probably my, this is my second year at Knott Central. Uh, I, I just every day, every day I take it. I'm fortunate to play baseball with these guys and uh, just – just being out on the field with them, yeah. 20 years from now, when you're coaching the game and coach asked you to coach your position, what are you going to tell the youngster? Uh, tell us about your position and some pointers that you would give to young players that want to or perhaps are already playing your position. What position do you play again, remind me? Uh, a little bit everywhere. I play shortstop, second, outfield, and pitch. Cool. What do you tell then? What do you tell a kid that, how important it is to learn them all then, right? Or well, I mean, it's important to be to be able to fill whatever spot your team needs. So that's kind of what I've always tried to be able to do, just to work on everything and never – just got to have confidence, think that you're going to get it done and go out there and be you and get it done. Baseball's a cruel sport. You can't let your highs get too high and your lows get too low. You can just take it day by day and keep it simple. Simple. Hey, when we're at practice, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. When, when you're at practice and it's, it's a, and you're having a bad day, the whole team's having a bad day. Who who would you rather get the hind end chewing from, Coach Dameron or Coach Turner? Don't turn around either. I'm not gonna tell you he's looking at you. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. What are we doing bad at? Everything. It, like, okay. it's one of those days that – Just nothing goes right. Yeah, every, nothing. I used to throw in balls around the field. We're not catching anything. We're not hitting it. Or everything we're hitting is in the air. Is Jerbo an option on this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. No, no. <laughs> oh, Coach oh, no. Oh, no. Not, not Jerbo. <laughs> Coach Dameron or Coach Turner? That's tough. I – I'm going to play the safe route, and I'm going to say no answer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I, we might have to play the fifth. Yeah. Because whoever we see, the other one's going to give it to us first the next time. Yeah, well. So. All right, <laughs> let me help you get off the hook, guys. <laughs> Back in the classroom, uh, what's your favorite subject up there? And it don't have to necessarily be because of the teacher even. But at, in, in the classroom, what's your, what's your favorite? Is PE an answer? Sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> this guy majored in that. <laughs> Two times. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're the master in PE. Yeah. PhD. Uh, well, uh, math. Math? Yeah. Cool. I'm a big history guy. I like learning about the past. Good deal. When it's all said and done, what are we majoring in? What do we want to do with the rest of our life? Probably engineering. I'll go into uh, business, probably. Business. Big business guy. Oh, I could see them both doing I that. Could, I could see them both doing it, yeah. All right, a couple of off-the-subject questions. Normally, we'd ask you what you want on your pizza, but we don't know it's cheese. Yeah. Okay, but you're running on up to Dairy Queen. What's your go-to blizzard? Chocolate chip cookie dough. I'm, I, I'm simple. I keep it with Oreo. I like to do a little cookies and cream, yeah. And your favorite dessert? Ice cream. I'll go ice cream with you, ice cream. Favorite place to eat? Besides hot rods pizza. Uh, fast, fast food or sit down? Either one. It's up to you. 
fast food Chick-fil-A sit down go like Malone's they got good steak oh yeah yes so, they do <laughs> he's answering all the questions yeah. right I'll do uh, uh, what's that place Drake's they just opened a Drake's yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good sit down spot and then uh, fast food got to be Taco Bell hey, ain't nothing wrong with that either yeah, man up there. ain't nothing wrong with either one of them <laughs> hey fellas uh, if you again could leave some advice to a younger you Maybe I'm getting a little deep, but that's all right. If you could rewind this thing back and tell yourself that five-year-old something, what would you say? Everything always works out. 100%. Uh, just put your time in, get the work done, and uh, good things will happen. Stay the course. One word that describes the team, what is it? You got up on that. No, that's about five words. Uh, well, no, no, no. I was telling him. No, I was telling him. him. He can go. He can go. I'm thinking. <laughs> One word. Grit. Grit. I like it. We've got a lot of uh, comeback wins this year. Just didn't give up. Never sat down. And, uh, yeah, just hard work and grit. Well, grit. I like it. Determined. We're kind of determined to get it done. Two good ones. Oh, I think it's two great ones. You may sure do. We never let you leave without giving an opportunity to give shout out out. And so take this time, each of you, to uh, say thanks, hello to whoever you want to out there. Hey, Mom, hey, Dad. Uh, shout out to the boys for doing their part. You know, I always got always to gotta thank the boys. Teammates and coaches and uh, just my family, my, my little brother, too. Yeah. Definitely him and Memo Huff, of yep, course. Memo Huff, yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, his uncle was one of the best men in my wedding. Did you know that? Ronald. R.G. Yes, sir. R.G. <laughs> yeah, I like him. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy, he's got a bunch of good uncles. Charles and all of them, man. I, of course, we grew, we grew up with him. I, th I think the world of his whole family. And, good good, uh, good people, though, good, man. Good, good people. Uh, guys, you're again, right. I know you're super busy. Got a bunch of stuff going on. And finally got a day off of practice. And got had to come up here and talk to us. Yeah. But I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, thank you all for coming. We'll do this again. For too long, hopefully. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. All righty. Yeah. Good luck tomorrow night <laughs> as they luck. head to Pike yes, Central. Yeah, Jason yeah. Salmon and I are champion. going to uh, uh, take a commercial. But, yeah. you know, this is not fair, though, really, because Mr. Collins heard all their answers. Uh, we've got more lined up for him because oh, okay. they done said he was the smart one. And the pizza so has been brought out. So he's got some mathematical equation questions coming up. All right, let's take a two-minute break back at the station, and then we'll be joined with Mr. Collins and Coach Sean Dameron. If he's ready, he'll go ahead and sit in with us a little bit as well. Uh, but let's take a two-minute commercial break. We're live at Hot Rods Pizza, 785-0055. Order you one with pepperoni, sausage, ham, and banana peppers, and they'll swear it was me ordering. We'll be back after this. Hey, you. It's -a me, a Marcello. Are you looking for a great place to eat lunch or a dinner? Now go right now to Hot Rods. They have delicious a pizza, cheese sticks, spaghetti, wings, a salad bar, and a more. You can eat in, carry out, or get a delivery from four great locations. Heinemann, Hazard, Allen, and Abetzi Lane. That's a hot rod. It's the best place to side in Italy. Mwah! Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson and the Knott County Fiscal Court is happy to once again be sponsoring another event featuring our Knott County youth. Judge Executive Dobson and the members of the Knott Fiscal Court encourage you to support all our Knott County youth in all of their academic and athletic endeavors. That positive reinforcement means the world to these student athletes. This reminder from Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson and the Knott County Fiscal Court. Nestled in the mountains of Appalachia, along the Purpose Road, is a hidden gem, Alice Lloyd College. For 100 years, ALC has been providing opportunities. Opportunity to learn from the best. Opportunity to work for my education. Opportunity to serve my community. Opportunity to become a leader. Opportunity to find my life's purpose. Apply now to find your purpose at Alice Lloyd College. Hicks Brothers Construction knows that times are tough and your money is hard to come by. That's why they pledge to always do the job right the first time. Specializing in backhoe work, septic systems, house seats, and road work. No job is too big 
or too small. Hicks Brothers Construction, a name you know you can count on. Call 606-785-4838. That's Hicks Brothers Construction. Sports Talk with James and Jamie. We're live in Hyman, Kentucky at Hot Rods Pizza here on Highway 550. Phone number again, 606-785-0055. Of course, uh, I'm starting to smell this pizza and get me a little bit hungry, James. I'm glad uh, we're not eating cheese pizza, though. Yeah, we're not eating cheese pizza. What's Guarantee your favorite you. toppings on a pizza? Man, I like it all. Probably pepperoni, sausage, and green peppers. I said we can't order uh, green peppers. Well, it's because you don't even like soup beans. No, I don't. (laughs) No, I don't. Welcome uh, with us um, again, Austin Collins and uh, Coach Sean Dameron. Coach, I know we got a bunch of stuff going on, but the weather played to our favor, and you guys were able to break free and come down and be with us. We appreciate you. Yeah, well, thanks for having us, Jamie. We uh, we really appreciate everything that you guys do uh, for the kids all across East Kentucky. You know, I, <clears throat> I was thinking earlier when you, when James had called me about, uh, asking me to come on to uh, your guys' show tonight, 10 years ago, everybody wanted a Harold Mullins to interview him. Sure. And the kids love that. Yeah, they yes. love it. And, and yeah. now you guys are in that role now. And, uh, you know, I don't, really don't think you understand how much kids appreciate that. Just like the all-star game last weekend, which I know you guys will touch base on. Uh, it just means a lot to the kids. And so we really appreciate everything that you guys do. And then coach, of course, we appreciate that, first of all. But when you compare me to Harold, I get a little bit – I can't handle that conversation. But I appreciate that. That's an ultimate compliment, man. And James and I have talked so many times about how that when we were youngsters, what it did mean to see that killer be Mike flag. Mm-hmm. And you knew something was big when Drum and Harold walked in, you know. And so I appreciate that, Sean. Uh, but back to the point at hand, your man, you guys having yourself a good season. Things going, on, going great, guys. Yeah, we are. Um, you know, we got off to a hot start. Uh, we're 11 and three. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah. The boys would never uh, say that they're satisfied. We don't want to be satisfied. Um, I think James touched base on it a little bit earlier. You know, we have an opportunity tomorrow night in the 2A championship to do something that no Knott County team has ever done, uh, and that's hang a 2A championship uh, banner. And so uh, that's our goal. That's our first goal on our on our on our board in our uh, in our cage area uh, is the 2A. The next goal would be the district and then the region. And so. We have an opportunity tomorrow night in front of us. Uh, we have to go lace them up and prove it on the field. And so we're, we're just uh, excited about the opportunity. And, again, James, I feel like, too, this year's team riding some momentum from last season. Would you agree with that? Oh, no question. Um, no question. This this year we walked in. James was part of our staff last year. Uh, when, when he chose this year not to be part of our staff, it uh, you know, I, I told him. <laughs> I said, you know, we're going to miss you. Um, you helped us last year. Um, and we still miss him uh, this year, but uh, the foundation was was made last year, right? Mm-hmm. We put a lot of time, a lot of effort uh, into the game of baseball itself. We were young. Uh, we had to teach them how to play, why to do things, and this year it's a little bit easier, you know, a little bit older. And so, of course, with addition of uh, Jaden Huff back here, that uh, that always helps out when you got somebody like that as well. So we're off to a fast start, but we got a lot of work in front of us. This guy here works so hard, man, and I, uh, I just love the way you, it don't make no difference who you play, what the score is, if there's a sold-out crowd or ten people. We know you're going to give us 100%. And hey. I, I love that about your game, brother. They bleed, I bleed. Right. Hey, right. step in the box, it, it is what it is. What's it feel like, though, to be having some success now because of all of your hard work? Uh, it means a lot, you know. Uh, you know, us working hard, it – it really is a lot of hard work that we do up there at the field. You know, we're up there every day, you know, no days off, really. And uh, we've been in a lot of work to get to where we are today. What has been so far your favorite part about this season? Uh, you know, just winning. You know, last season we had a we had a rocky start, you know. And this year coming out, you know, we're more confident. We're ready. You know, we expect to win this year. You know, we're, we're going to win. We're going to do it. We know we are. You know, I asked Jaden to park, and I'll ask you before I ask Coach. If you could say one word that would sum up this year's team so far halfway through the season, what's that one word? Uh, unwilling. Unwilling to lose. So, Coach, now I'm going to ask you a question. Three seniors, mm-hmm. and I'm going to give you the three words. You tell me what that equals in your, in your mindset as a coach. Grit, determination, and willingness. 
What does that mean? Championship. And that's exactly what, we, what we're doing, right? Um, our senior leadership, um, I had Austin and Jaden and, and Parker, all three, do a, um, uh, write an essay before the season started on extreme ownership. Um, <clears throat> gave them a homework assignment, and I said, I want you to take this back. I want you to Google it. I want you to research it. Um, and then I want you to come back, and I want you to share it with the team. And I, wa I, want you to, I want to hear what it means to you to take on ownership and what leadership really is. We, we talk about it all the time. Leadership is not given. It's earned. Um, and I think that our team has bought into that. You know, we have um, – you, know, you guys alluded to this a little bit earlier, but we have um, – our middle school team is 7-0. and o. You know who the middle school team practices with if they're in seventh grade? It's the high, high school, school team. We get them up there. We get them involved. Um, feeder programs are important. You know, the Little League, um, we've been involved in that for years. You and I both have, James. Uh, that's where it has to start at to build programs, um, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but championships is ultimately what it's all about. Sean, you've been in places or been part of programs where it was just a work to get to have a field, a work to – have travel money, a work to be able to make sure we had ample money for this, this, and this. Now you're at a place to where you got superb facilities, uh, you have sweet uniforms, the equipment it takes to get the job done. That don't happen, though, without good support and a lot of hard work from parents and boosters and so forth. Uh, it's a pretty nice gig for the coach <laughs> to have the luxuries that you've got. It is, Jamie, and uh, our boards have been outstanding about fundraising. You know, that's number one. But let me, let me back up a little bit. Think about not Central Baseball. It's all about tradition. Yes, sir. Right? It started back with James and Gary Hammonds. Yeah. Right? Think about the coaches that have been there. Gary Hammonds, Scott Cornett, Jamie Couch, Chris Amberg. I mean, I, I could probably go on. I'm probably leaving somebody out that's important. But my point is, is that those guys laid the foundation up there for what we're doing now. Without them, it couldn't be done. And I told these guys last year, James was with us on day one last year, that uh, the expectation at Knott County Central is to win. And that was because the foundation was laid 30, 40 years ago. And that's not changed. And it's not going to change as long as I'm up there. I think, James, and this is no direction towards anybody, that maybe we lacked a little bit in our feeder program for a while, and that might have hurt some. But now when you hear them talk about the good start and then we know the people that are working hard, that's paying off now, and it will pay off even more, Coach. Yeah, oh, no question about it. The, the feeder system is where it's at. Um, all of these guys, I had them in Little League. Right. You know, and, and that's kind of where I'm going with that. And, we've, and it's, paid, it's paid off, right? I mean, they, they yeah. kind of know the, know the system. They understand the game. Uh, makes things, the transition, a little bit easier. Um, but you know what? You've got you to credit these guys. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's their team. Sure. It ain't my team. Uh, I have nothing to do with it other than just going up there and just kind of giving them a, a, a little bit of guidance. Um, I've told them this is a player's first uh, program. They decide how far we go and how many games we win, and uh, that's the way it's always going to be as long as I'm there. But, Sean, I told some people when they hired you, I said one of the cool things about him is he gets what the value of a feeder program is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's big, man. It's, a, it's the most important thing. At the high school thing. sports here in the mountains. It's the most important thing. Uh, and that, it's not just for baseball. No, I, I'm, That's every sport. Right. That's every That's what sport. I said. Yeah. <clears throat> Austin, I'm going to put you on the spot. Coach kind of led into it. Okay. Okay, I'm so ready. let's take the coaching staff out of the equation. We're having a bad day at practice. Who's the one guy on the team that pulls everybody together and says enough's enough? That ain't what we're here for. It ain't what we're built for. It's what we're, who's that guy that's vocal and don't care to hurt feelings? Parker. Parker, uh, he'll tell you straight up, be brutally honest. He'll say, you know, you're doing this wrong, fix it, or, you know, get off the field. He's brutally honest, but I think all the young boys really – take that and they're like, well, maybe I should start doing this right instead of goofing around or anything like that. Okay, now let's say that Coach Turner and Coach Dammer is fired up. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about when I say fired up. <laughs> Who's the one guy on the team that's going to make a joke and you're going to be like, yeah, okay, here we're running some polls? Braden Hall. Braden Hall will make <laughs> a joke at any, any I meeting. I can see Bird Hall do it. Yeah. Any meeting. Yeah. He – you can't. You can't go a meeting without him doing something. So, I, I can say this. I wouldn't trade our three seniors for anybody in the state of Kentucky or any of our players. Um, it's the best group of kids I've ever been around, best working kids I've ever been around. Uh, I love them dearly. I tell them that. That's the reason why I'm brutally honest with them, uh, even though they may not want to hear it. 
Uh, but it's, it's, it's out of love, right? I want the best for them, not only for baseball, but for life in general. Uh, and that's part of our program. You know, half of the time that we spend talking, it's not about baseball. Right. It's about life. Yeah. Uh, and about what you want to do with your life and, and where you want to go in life. And so uh, anything that we can do to add value to that uh, part of, of a young man's career at Not Central, we're going to do it. Tell some people that haven't had a chance to tune into Jamie Couch's broadcast or perhaps come up and watch you guys. Tell us a little bit about your team. Let's, we don't have to necessarily name them all, but just some strengths, some things about your team that they're going to enjoy coming up and watching when the weather, if the weather ever turns. Yeah, this year. yeah hopefully the, uh, the, the weather will break a little bit and give us a, a couple of nice days because we've not had many of them. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I'll say about this year's baseball team is fight. We will not give up. Yes. And, and it, it, the biggest compliment is, is when other coaches come up to you after the game and say, I told my kids you better lace them up. Um, and we hear that all the time. You know, we're off to an 11-3 start. That didn't look like 11-3 a month ago. And the reason is, is we got down to Leslie County 8-2, to clawed our way back and won. We got down to Estill County this past weekend 4 nothing, scored five in the bottom of the seventh to win. Uh, we were down to Wolf County early, came back. Down to Hazard, 4-1, to one, came back and won. So we've had multiple games where they could have just threw in the towel but they're not because they believe this year. They expect to win. And I keep telling our guys, we just talked about it today. When you visualize and you think that you're going to do something, a lot of times over the course of a season that's going to come to fruition, and that's, what, that's where we're at. John, what do you bring from your past experiences as a player to this team? What are some things that you've been there, done that, and you can help these guys? Fellas, I, I've been there a little bit. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, so number one is never give up. Never be satisfied. Right. You know, um, you know, Scott Corn and I played for him at Alice Lloyd College, and he would always say, you know, I, I had the heart of a champion. I would run through a brick wall. And that's what I expect these guys to do. Yeah. You know, play the game the right way. I think uh, I heard Jaden allude to it earlier. We talk about it all the time. If you approach the game with a lot of respect, the game will take care of you. And so that's what we expect our players to do. Um, respect the game, play it the right way, and good things will happen. You know, there's a book, and, I, and I'm – what you hit on it earlier, I don't know if you if you even know there's a book. It's called Extreme Ownership. Yeah. And we, as in the state police, By every Jocko. every, prom, every yes. promotional process that yeah. you go through, you have to read that book. And I don't know if you've read that book or not, but I would suggest to anybody that's going into college or going to be in some kind of leadership role to read that book because uh, he's got several books, but the Extreme Ownership is always one that's on our promotional process. And it's got a lot of good points in it, yeah. uh, a lot of things that's, that's that people look for. That's the one that we made for. them write the article yeah. about, James. About it's it, it, it's yeah. a killer book. I've read it five times, and I yeah. don't even like reading. Um, but it, it but it's a good book, and it's one of those books that every single time you read it, you pick out something new to go, to go forward in life with. Um, one of, The only one that I know of so far that's signed to go to college, what does that mean, that knowing at, at the process right now that you still have got a future in baseball? You know, it means a lot. It gives this season a little bit more, you know, this ain't my final year. So I haven't been as emotional as I'd say some seniors that are going to be done playing after this. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to know that Cornet believes in me to come up there and play ball. You know, uh, it's, it's a big accomplishment. It's something I worked for and looked up for for my whole life. Little me would be smiling. Well, your mom and dad smiling too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and granny. I mean, they've been there with you from day one. I mean, even from T ball to the day, they don't miss ball games. Never. And, uh, you know, you owe a lot, a lot to your mom and dad. A lot of players do. They forget that part that uh, for almost 17 years now, you can't drive. So somebody's yeah. got to have you at every one of those and got to pick you up and wait for through the cold weather and stuff. They man. all did it. Yeah. Sean, baseball at that level is so much better. It was good when you played, but now, man, you go to some of these, such as Alice Lloyd, it looks like a minor league field. <laughs> yeah. it, it's well, crazy what they got versus the days when we had to rake the field and and, and play before dark because there wasn't no lights yeah, up there. Yeah, there was no lights at Alice Lloyd College <laughs> when I was there. And if you wanted to play, you had to cut the grass before the game. Right. Right? So, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Eddie Browning, who is the athletic director at Hazard, will tell you this. We were lawnmower duty for two years, which meant – if the game's at 3 o'clock, be up there at 12 o'clock and start pushing the lawnmower yeah. uh, because otherwise you were playing in a, in a cow field and you couldn't see the baseball. So, um, But, you know, the facility over there is super nice. Yeah. Um, you know, Scott Cornett is uh, he's the hallmark of Allisoy College. Uh, it's the first name that you come to, Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, one of the the best people that you'll ever ever you Amen know ever yes, meet, um, and so I'm glad that Austin's going over there. 
I hope all my players go there. It's a great education, a great place to play sports and, and get a good education. And then, they go, and then of course, they're going to prepare you for life as well. They are. And, guys, here's the thing, too, now. Okay, everybody wants to play the next level. We're in a day and age now where you can get on YouTube, Facebook, and watch people play in Pippa Passes. If you put the numbers and the work in, there's no reason they won't come from wherever and look at you. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. You and know, he plays down in the Smokies every year. He takes the kids down there. Two reasons. One, to get together as a team, but two, to get in front of those minor league, major league coaches. Yeah, and, you know, now, Jamie, I don't know if you guys know this, but there is a, um, there's a scout league. Yeah. Right? So, I mm -hmm. mean, if these high school like Austin and Jaden and Parker are three seniors, they graduate, they could literally start the next day after graduation and get in a scout league and travel around several different states playing baseball. Um, that opportunity wasn't there 20, 30 years ago, you well, know, for these Dalton. kids. You know, yeah, that's exactly Dalton right. Dalton playing professional baseball. Yeah. yeah he, not he got, he's got some windmill kicks. Well, now, I don't think he learned any Coach of that Cornish from Coach Cornish. Coach Cornish says he gets that from Kim, though. Sean yeah. knows I'm going to brag on <laughs> Coach Cornish as much as him, but he didn't learn that dancing from no, Scott. No, I, I can guarantee you that Scott Cornish is not happy when, uh, when Dalton Cornish is out there doing the, the – No, but he's the chewing the two home runs. And wearing the tutus, I can promise you that Coach Scott Cornish is not happy with that. But uh, he's doing good for himself. Yeah. Got his own uh, swag company, yeah, got his making own his swag, gloves, gloves with DC3. Bats. Shout out to them, uh, and the bananas and all that. Austin, when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. what are we majoring in? What are we going to do with the rest of our life? I'm going to go and uh, major in accounting. Go get my CPA, you know. You have to get back into coaching. Somehow, some way. I'm I'm not, don't even look to this guy. Hey. I'm telling you now that we're going we're gonna to get you coaching somewhere, too. You've can been an accountant it. and still be an assistant coach. Yeah. You love the game and you play it too right not to be an assistant coach. Right, yeah. coach? Yeah, 100% yeah, correct. Um, Austin's probably – you know, I say this all the time. Um, if he was a little faster, right? I mean, he's, he's sometimes a turtle mode, what I always call him. like to get the wagon off there. Brutally you know? honest. This yeah, but I am. But, yeah. you know, that's know an area that he needs to work on, yeah. you know, is to get faster at that next level. But, um, you know, he's one of the best kids that I've ever coached, right. period. Yeah, and um, just, he's just a special young man, and I just I can't say enough about all of our kids. So, I mean, and, and I'll say this too, Jamie. Um, you know, not only our kids here at Knott County, but across the 14th region, across the 15th region, baseball's pretty daggone good. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, and uh, softball's pretty daggone good, mm -hmm. and uh, our kids don't get enough exposure. Um, and next year, I'm going to set out to try to change that as well. I've talked to some other coaches around the area, uh, and we're going to try to do something to, for more exposure for our kids in, in East Kentucky. And I got on that note, give a shout out to guys like Gary Hammonds and Bill Melton. Yeah. Mr. Melton down at Cordy was one of my heroes. I did my student teaching under him. And David I, Melton. David Melton. Yeah. I got yeah. Bill Melton at Alice Lloyd College yeah. and David Melton at Cordia. And, yeah, uh, Coach Dixon and, and Coach MC Hammonds, Napier. Those guys that yeah. paid the rope for these young yes, coaches, sir. though, James. Uh, they would be happy with where we're at, but they also would echo what you just said, Sean. It's time to take the uh, promotion of this Next game up to another level. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. Baseball deserves the TV coverage uh, that basketball is getting. Yeah. Uh, yep. it, it deserves the radio coverage. You guys are getting it, but so many other teams wouldn't know how to act yeah. for Mamaw to be able to listen to them on WKCB or yep. their WKCB, whatever that station is, or yep. watch them on Facebook or what have you. Yeah, we're hoping to get some, some games up there. We've got to wait on the weather break. This rain stuff wreaks havoc on the equipment. Coach, I'm going to put you on the spot one last time. On a roster of probably 17, 18 kids in 30 years, who can be governor? You can only pick one. Take craft. No question, hands down. Uh, Tate Craft would <laughs> yeah. be the next – in fact, I, I'll probably go ahead and predict it right now. He will be a governor of the state of Kentucky one day. That's if, that's if his daddy don't give him the car lot. And, yeah. You know, but Tate Craft for sure I think could be governor. He's the, the, the politician, the best I've ever seen at that age. He, How about you, well. brother? I'd probably have to go with Tate Craft too, you know. <laughs> hey, he's got I two mean, votes already, and yeah. you know I'm voting for him. Hey, now let's put you on the spot just a little bit, just like we did the other guys, some random questions off the wall. Uh, if you go up to Dairy Queen, what's going to be your go-to blizzard? Uh, probably cookie dough. I'm right with cookie dough. And you ordered the cheese pizza, so I can't ask you what you want on your pizza? Yeah. All these beautiful toppings, and you order a cheese pizza? It's simple, plain, just how I like it. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. <laughs> Worst subject in school. Worst subject? Worst. Worst. Oh, he threw you a curveball. Science. I don't, I don't really like science. Favorite subject? Math, definitely. Favorite restaurant? Chick-fil-A. 
Chick Fil A or oh no, now we're or, yeah. let's, oh, oh, <laughs> sounds or, like you, James whoa, Seven. Or, whoa, You've whoa, rubbed whoa, off on whoa, it. Whoa, there's no or in favorite food. I mean, you can go. Okay, if yeah, you're in here Lexington, we go. If, if you're in Lexington, my wife gonna, does this same thing when I ask her where she wants to eat. You do this <laughs> same thing. <laughs> if you're in Lexington, the world's worse. <laughs> if you're in Lexington, you know you're gonna get Chick Fil A because you don't get that around here. Around right. here, you know, probably the best you can get from a fast food right place is probably Subway. Subway has you know good meat. You know, it's good food. But you go to Lexington, you have to get Chick Fil A. So You're getting ready to get a bunch of hunger den. And you don't even, <laughs> yeah. do you even know what the hunger den is? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been he's there a couple times. He's yeah, done his homework. Yeah, your Chick fil A's out. <laughs> Friday, Friday's Chick fil A at Alice Ford County. And yeah, Saturday. Chick fil A. And yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. But you get some Chick fil A on the road. Coach yeah. wanted to take care of you. You get, as long yeah. as they, everybody keeps the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But Better than the RC Cola and Moon Pie that we got. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> In a brown know, bag on the way, yeah, exactly pop the right. cooler up and don't yes, spill sir. the ice out of it. Yes, we need sir. that for the elbows. Yep. Hey, favorite baseball player when you were five, six years old and you said, someday I want to grow up to be him. You know, this one's going to be a little bit off the wall, but Brandon Phillips. Brandon Phillips was – he was something that can, at uh, Cincinnati that we'll never see ever again at Cincinnati. And he was, uh, I think, once in a generation player. That doesn't get as much fame as all these other players do. One piece of advice you could have gave a five-year-old Austin Collins. Work harder. If you – when you – not if, when you coach as an assistant coach and you're coaching your position, what will you tell the youngsters coming up playing your position? Uh, you know, if they're pitching, you know, throw strikes. Uh, don't beat around the bush, you know. Challenge the hitter. Mm-hmm. Make him hit the ball. That's – that's been one of the biggest things I've struggled with, you know. Trust, trust your defense behind you. Yeah. Right? Everybody's trust scared to death. Somebody does hit the ball. Yeah. Trust them. I mean, that's what I've tried to focus on this year and uh, been pretty successful with it. And we're going to keep we're going to keep coach around. I got some more questions for him. But before we let you go, tell me, uh, give some shout outs. Coach, you got time to stay just a little bit longer? Yes, sir. Give some shout outs out to some people that's helped you and also uh, whoever – might be going to buy you a birthday present down the road or whatever. Yeah. You better you better thank them. They're watching because they're putting it in the comment <laughs> section. I better. Uh, I say hi, Mom, hi, Dad, uh, hi, Grandma. I know that they're watching. They have to be. Uh, thanks to all my family and uh, friends and everybody for pushing me. Thanks to this team, you know, for being my brothers and uh, family. Uh, thanks to everybody who believed in me. All right, man. And, again, let's take a two-minute commercial break. And I want to come back and talk to Coach Sean Damon a little more about uh, his pathway to get to where he's at. Then we're also going to have him weigh in, just like we want the rest of you, on who's going to be the next basketball coach. And, oh, by the way, how do I get this to do? Let's hit this button right here. Going to give away some free Hot Rods pizza, two large pizzas, any way you want it, and a medium cheese stick. Uh, And all you got to do is in the comment section tell us who you think is going to be the next UK basketball coach. And we'll put you in the pot to win a gift certificate courtesy of Hot Rods Pizza. That's pretty cool, James. You don't have to be who he is. You don't have to get it right. You just need to tell us who you think it's going to be. Let's take a two-minute commercial break. More with Coach Sean Dameron and uh, Sports Talk right here at Hot Rods Pizza in Hyman, Kentucky. We'll be back. Hey, you. It's me, Marcello. Are you looking for a great place to eat lunch or a dinner? I go right now to Hot Rods. They have delicious pizza, cheese sticks, spaghetti, wings, a salad bar, and a more. You can eat in, carry out, or get the delivery from four great locations. Heinemann, Hazard, Allen, and a Betsy Lane. That's a Hot Rods. It's the best place this side of Italy. Mwah! your car is in a mess take it to the best that's hometown garage located in pine top kentucky buster sloan and donnie combs have been in the business for years and we promise you that if the job satisfies them it will you for free estimates pickups and deliveries locally you can call them at 606-276-1171 that's hometown garage Nelson Frazier Funeral Home is proud to sponsor tonight's sporting event. 
Nelson Frazier has the highest quality American-made funeral products, cremation services, mausoleum, and memorial markers, all with a family budget in mind. With three chapels located in Hyman, Martin, and now in Prestonsburg, Nelson Frazier Funeral Home is local people serving local families. Home streets of glory. Nestled in the mountains of Appalachia, along the Purpose Road, is a hidden gem, Alice Lloyd College. For 100 years, ALC has been providing opportunities. Opportunity to learn from the best. Opportunity to work for my education. Opportunity to serve my community. Opportunity to become a leader. Opportunity to find my life's purpose. Apply now to find your purpose. At Tehama, Kentucky from Hot Rods Restaurant here on Highway 160. We've been joined with Knock King Central Baseball team tonight. Coach Sean Dameron still with us. Uh, seniors Austin Collins, Jaden Huff, and Parker Williams had their interviews. They did an excellent job, Jamie. They're going to take mine and your spots where it's all said and done. All three of them. I'd hire them today, but unfortunately for all three of them, they're going to make much better money than what we could pay them here. Uh, but uh, they did a great job, and I know uh, Coach Dameron's pleased with uh, the way they conduct themselves off the field as much as they do on their field. And that's, that's important, right, brother? Yeah, it's the most important thing to me. Um, you know, character, um, you know, we always talk about that and about, um, you know, the, the, the way to act, the way to approach the game, the way to approach life. And, uh, you know, so character is very important. How much of, and this will be the last time I'll, I'll brag on him tonight, but how much of Coach Cornett's uh, ways of doing things is in your ways of doing things? You know, uh, somebody asked me that one time. Um, said, what well, two most influential coaches, you know, had an impact on me? Um, and without a doubt, it was Gordon Parado at Prestonsburg High School, my basketball coach, um, and Scott Cornett. Because when I first got to Alasoy College, I'll never forget it. Um, Scott's little girl, Haley, was two years old at the time. You know, of course, now she's a grown woman with, with babies of her own. Um, but I watched how he was with her off the field. Mm -hmm. And then I would watch him on the field, and I would be like, this is not the same person. No. <laughs> you know, this guy's a maniac. That you know? never yeah, pops out when Haley's saying. around. <laughs> and, and then I will tell you this quick story. We were down in Panama City my freshman year. We were um, we we had, the night before we had gotten into some things that we probably shouldn't have done as a baseball team. And the next morning, Coach Cornett took us out to the beach at 6 a.m. Some of us were just getting in at 6 a.m. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Coach Cornett takes us out to the beach at 6 a.m. and uh, he runs us. And you know, running in the sand barefoot is not very easy. And we were sick, and we were we were you know vomiting everywhere. Then we go to the field, and he has a fungo bat. And there's a steel pole in the middle of the dugout, and he gets so mad that he hits the fungal bat against the steel pole, and it whips all the way around it, a piece of metal going around a piece of metal. And I said, I want to be like him. Yeah. I want to care as much as he cares. Yeah. And so that was the defining moment for me, I think, that, he knew, that I knew that he loved us, and that's the reason why he was so mad at us. Now, Sean, with everything you've got going outside of the game, coaches coach because they love the game. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they don't, they don't do this very long. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you know you wanted to do this? You know, I, I've coached all my life. Um, you know, whether it be grade school or high school, I had the opportunity to coach at Knott County Central Basketball when David Adams was the head coach. He was very nice enough to ask me to help him. Uh, I helped Chris Sandberg get up here for five or six years. Before that, I helped Scott Cornett for a couple of years. Uh, so I've always been involved at some level, uh, whether it be basketball or, or baseball in, in the county. Um, but it's my passion for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the game. It's making sure that they have somebody there that cares about them, that will work them, uh, that will treat them good, that will prepare them for life, develop them, hopefully get them a college scholarship. So I think that's where my passion lies. Um, and, of course, my son, um, you know, at a, at a very young age, was a very, uh, you know, good player in basketball and baseball both. And so um, – and he could come here today and coach. Yes, sir. He, he's smarter than I am. Probably will be a much better coach than I ever was. Um, but that, uh, you know, when he was small, I kind of knew it. Yeah. James, it's, uh, they say coaches are born. And uh, I know that it's, it's in your blood. And all of both of you guys, all three of us, we just, greatest thing is getting to work with kids and see that light go off over top of their head. Mm -hmm. 
whether it be in practice, whether it be in a game, why is he making me do this? And then when it pays off, that's why he's making me do it. Right? You know? I had a conversation, I'll tell you this. So, last, last couple of weeks, Connor Napier has been really struggling. And um, his body language was a little of not what I liked it to be. A um, little bit lackadaisical in practice of not what I wanted him to be. And he has the capability to be the best shortstop in the region, period. Yes. Sophomore. Still got two years left. And so we were up 8-1 to one on Perry the other night in the last inning, and they hit a ground ball up the middle, and he doesn't die for it. And I didn't like it very well. And so I let him know it right there on the spot that he should have got dirty. And then after he came off, I let him know it again and didn't give him a chance to respond back to me. And then that night, I texted him. And I was talking to him about your approach to the game mm-hmm. has to change for, you to, for your game to change. Well, fast forward two days later, he gets a walk-off hit against Estill County. And I said, if you play the game the right way, it'll take care of you. And so the light bulb went off, right. just like you were talking about. He, now he sees it. Yes, sir. I have to approach practice and games a certain way, and, and it'll take care of me. So that, that's one of those light bulb moments. Coach, let's take the, the season out of hand right now. If you've got one goal for your team to take away one thing this year, what is it? I mean, um, you know, it's, it's championship. I mean, that's, that's our goal. Um, you know, that's the one thing that we're after. Uh, and that's the 14th region championship. I want to hang a banner up there. I want to be in line with the rest of the tradition of, uh, of Knock County Central coaches um, that have hung one up there. I want these guys to hang one up there and have their name on it. Um, so ultimately, that's the one thing that we're after, and that's what we're chasing. If the coaches that you will play in the second half of the season calls up the coaches from Perry and Wolf and asks them about you, what are they going to say the strengths of this not central team is? And what are some things that, Coach, you know you got to probably improve on that you still yet can yeah. for the rest of this season? It's a great question, Jamie. So, um, number one is we play the game the right way. Yes, sir. There's not going to be any ifs, ands, buts about that. We're going to play the game the right way. We're going to be solid fundamentally. We're going to play sound defense. We're going to throw strikes. We're not going to walk a lot of people. Um, we're going to put a lot of pressure on the defense. Um, I think last year we led the <laughs> – but James knows this. He was with me last year. Uh, we led the region in squeezes by 60-plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm a person that likes to put a lot of pressure on the defense, bunt a lot, move the runners over, old traditional, old school baseball. Um, one area that I think that we could improve on, we talk about it every day, and that's hitting. Uh, mm-hmm. We hit too many fly balls. Um, we hit too many pop-ups. We talk about it all the time. We've reduced our strikeouts this year, um, which has been a good thing, but we're still hitting the ball way too much up in the air for my liking. Um, The other night against Floyd Central, we had seven pop-ups and seven Ks. If we could take that from seven to five in both those categories, how many more runs can we score? Sure. So it's not about seven to zero. It's just let's get a little bit better. Every week, let's get a little bit better at certain things. So hitting would be one of those areas. But, James, on the flip side of things, everybody got to be happy or or pleased. Let's say it that way, at least the way things are going right now. There are a lot of coaches would would trade – Trade records with you. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, you know, I get texts from coaches all the time um, that talk about our kids. That's mm-hmm. what's most important. Yeah. As they talk about your kids and how they play and, and uh, you know, how nice they are and how polite they are and what they say to them after the games. And so that's the biggest compliment anybody can give me about, uh, about our baseball program. And, and I get that quite often. Uh, you know, our good friend over at Letcher, Jim Bob. Yes, sir. Um, you know, was put in a bad situation. He's doing a great job over there. Um, uh, uh, a terrific job over there, and I was talking with him today back and forth a little bit. He's uh, supposed to be helping us call games, okay? <laughs> this was the plan, right? In DC. Next year. Well, but phase him in some. He had no idea he's going to be coaching this year, fellas. Yeah. No, and, you're right. He got doing, through into a bad spot. Right, last minute spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wasn't yeah. even last minute. The Here's minute your had schedule, coach, and hope this hack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Jim, Jim Bob was put in a very bad, tough situation. Um, he and I went to college together, so we know each other extremely well. Um, the day that he that all this kind of went down, um, we've talked every day since almost. Uh, he's a great friend of mine, um, and I'll help him any way that I can, and he'll help me any way that he can. And so uh, I just appreciate his friendship. And, and, I told, I, and I told him this, and I was honest with him. I said, you'll be just fine. You love the game and you love the kids just like that, you know, like you do. Your kids will be fine. Sure. Yeah. A final question, Coach, before we let you get you out, get out of here. You like the Wildcats as much as James and I do. 
I give you a check. Who you hire? <laughs> well, you know, I think I told you guys this but, uh, by you, when, right when you come on the air is, uh, uh, you know, if um, I don't know how many more years Rick Pitino can walk a sideline. Um, but if he it, get him a wheelchair, I will get him a wheelchair. I'll tell you what, if anybody's listening out there right now, they want to hire Rick Patino and they're worried about his age. Um, I'll volunteer to pay for the doctor bills, the wheelchair, or whatever else comes down the road 15 years from now, because I still think that he's the best basketball coach X's in the country. And yes, sir. You give him two days to prepare for you, you're beat. And so you're going with Patino, and then who do you think it will be? I think that it that's a million dollars. I think it will be Billy Donovan. I think he, you know, you, sometimes those NBA coaches, they, you know, they just they're they're so long and they can handle that stuff. And I think it's time for him to come back. I think it would be great for him, just like Calipari left, right? So it was good for him. It was mm-hmm. a new start. And I think Billy Donovan can get a new start at Kentucky. And I think Kentucky fans would embrace him and love it. James, I agree with you 100%, brother. Uh, before we take this last commercial break and let Sean uh, hop out of here, let's me and you jump back in it real quickly. I've yes been, no in, I've been in it since Cal left. Yeah, sometimes you like to start a pot, I, I will. <laughs> that's all you posting well, some of the that's posts. Because, you... That's because it's all everybody's doing. I mean, everybody's just starting to put. Nobody knows right now. You know what I mean? You talk, it's not as easy as picking up a phone going, hey, you, Jamie, you want to be coach at Kentucky. First of all, we, are, we've got to get permission from your agent, agent to talk yeah. to you. School. And then you've got to yeah. agree to it. Then we've got to find a time. And then we've got to sit down and have the, talk about the contract, what you want. They've got to give time to review. It's not a 15-minute. Now we'll be with Bruce Pearl. We can offer Bruce Pearl a million dollars. He's saying, yes, he's getting on the plane. I got no problem with it, by the way. I got no problem um, with Bruce Pearl either, by the way. Me neither. Way. I don't me, either. Can I throw this in real quick? Sure. Um, so, th- you know, we, we play the 2A championship tomorrow night. Right. That game's at 6 o'clock at Pike Central. Um, I would hope that if anybody's up that way and they want to watch a good baseball game, we play Letcher. So that's our big rival tomorrow night for that two-way championship. We need as many people there as we can possibly get. Um, so I encourage everybody to come out. And then Saturday is our Tim Short Classic right here in Knott County. Um, we got two games. We're going to be playing Hazard and Shelby Valley. So all day, but we're going to have three games all together. So that's a huge day. Thanks to Tim and Todd for sponsoring that for us. So uh, uh, just a huge weekend of baseball for the Knott County Central Patriots. So if you if you were wanting to watch some baseball and you want to get out this weekend, please come to the games. We'd love to have you. Well, good luck tomorrow night, fellas. I'll love you again. We, uh, what time does the Tim Short Classic start? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Saturday. All right. Be there. Tomorrow night, big, big game. Go in. And we, we want them to bring that back. Again, I yeah. like my buddy over there at Letcher Central, but to have a 2A trophy up there would be pretty sweet, man. Yep, sure would be great. So yeah, I, well, I appreciate you guys again. You, for, you oh, can, thanks for coming. You can Cole. be yep, you can you. be all the friends in the world you went, but when that first pitch goes down, friendship goes out the window <laughs> for about two hours. Oh, Jamie, and I'll say this too. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played golf with this man right here, but let me tell you, we something. win. We don't lose. So if you want to get you somebody and challenge James and I, we'll, yeah. we'll play you any day of the week. We'll take it. We're, I'll we're drive the proven. golf cart and let you fellas play, okay? <laughs> well, that ain't no fun because we we yeah. got to cheat. So we, uh, <laughs> Unlimited uh, thank mulligans. Thank you, guys. I appreciate having thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you coming, fellas, coach. for coming sure up and having, night, having coming. a good night with us. Hey, James Sellerman. Yes, sir. Uh, we got to go through some of these notes before yeah. we take the next commercial break. And, again, appreciate the Bat Pats and Knock County Central being here. And we'll yeah. remind everybody again they'll be at Good Pike night. Central tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. This is the first time we've ever done one of these shows on a yeah. live remote. Um, but, James, as we do this, let's segue again. My friend, David Melton. Uh, I've got that on under notes. him. Yeah. Yes, sir. And it's the David Melton Classic at Cordia, April the 25th, 26th, 27th. Yep. 14 teams playing in that. Uh, Corbin and Pikeville, two top 25 teams. Uh, yeah, there's three of the top 25 teams going to be over there end of April on Lots Creek. Um, Corbin's ranked 9, Pike 12, PRPI Louisville's ranked 10th. Um, and then, of course, you know, Clay County's going to come over there, and they've got the Mr. Baseball candidate. We've got the baseball Mr. Cannon, Brandon Crawford's going to be over there. He's throwing about 95 mile an hour right now. Already signed with the University of Louisville. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, Jamie, I'll play any position on the field, but if a guy's throwing 95, I ain't high catching. <laughs> and, again, guys, all proceeds, after everything is paid for, goes to Hospice of the Blue Grass. Yes. Last year they gave them $1,000. And, James, they played that one last year under some not-so-kind weather circumstance, but still yet they had a ball. And uh, I think this year be even bigger and better. Well, I do too. I have spoke to, I've spoken to Joe Melton today, the coach at Cordia, and uh, so, some of the board members over there with the, with the uh, David Melton committee. 
Um, every team that participates is going to grad is going to get a college scholarship, so they're looking to give away somewhere around 10, 12, 14 scholarships. You know, the more money they raise, the uh, more college scholarships they can give away. As you said, any money that's left over after all the bills are paid, they give to uh, Hospice of the Bluegrass. David Melton spent the last several years uh, with Hospice, and uh, it really means a lot to uh, Joe and Steve Melton and the Melton family over on Lots Creek. And, you know, if you're looking to sponsor a, a good baseball um, tournament for the right reasons. Cordia gets zero money out of this. They, they keep zero for a fundraiser. They they don't put it as a baseball fundraiser. 100% of it goes back to kids in the mountain. And when I spoke to Joe Melton today, you know, and, and Steve and, and Chris and them over in Lodge Creek, that was David's mission in life. You know, I, I, I got to sit around many hours with, with David Melton. Of course, me and Joel grew up together, played on many baseball teams together. Um, he always wanted kids from the mountains, whether it's the 13th, 14th, the 15th region, kids. It didn't matter to him. He seen kids and had a love for baseball, and uh, he he had a lot of success with it. And that's a, this tournament is is being hot is is in his honor to give the college scholarships back to kids and uh, that play baseball and help kids go to school. And it doesn't necessarily, you know. I spoke. I was like, well, how does does the best kid or the you know the MVP get the scholarship? Absolutely not. Uh, it's a kid that they think deserves the opportunity to go, that's going to go to college and needs a little help to go. Um, so if you're looking for a business, uh, I'd highly recommend you all getting involved. Thank you, Coach. Y'all have a good night getting involved in, in uh, contact. You can leave, you can contact us at Hometown Sports Corner. We'll put you in contact with a board who you can help. But the more money that they can raise, the more college scholarships. You know, they're still looking for a sponsor for the T-shirts. Um a lot of good baseball. They're going to start at, I think, 6 o'clock on Thursday night, 5.30 on Saturday, and I think 10 or 11, or I'm sorry, 5.30 on Friday night because there's two games. Mm-hmm. And then I think 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, and they're going to play all day. Hey, listen to me now, too, guys. You hear us talking about changes. This is one of the things we told you we were going to do, start going on live remotes. Yeah. I've got some messages while we've been here. Okay, so we're going to be invited to go to some other places. We'll come out and hang out here. We'll go in the studio at WKCB Mm -hmm. real soon and join with the Wolfman. Uh, But I said that to say this. Something else new that we're going to try to incorporate in this show is some video. We'd like to have some highlights, uh, maybe a couple of interviews from some games that happen between Thursday and Thursday shows. Yeah. So uh, if we can't bring the games – then at least James and I will be there to shoot some highlights because we're going to be uh, over there at the David Melton Classic for some of the games yes. and some of the pitchers and so forth. We hope to have those guys maybe on the show between now and the April 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. Yeah, get them, uh, get them on there and talk about it. You're, you're right. It may, I mean, when you sit down and you have a conversation with Joe and Steve and Chris and all those on the board, man, you can tell that they're passionate about this tournament and the passionate holding the memory of, of David Melt or Coach Melton um, over at Cordy and what he meant. Like I said, man, he not just the teams of Lots Creek. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had Our, players from all over Eastern and Central Kentucky come in and play Lots Creek with him. My buddy Harold Kraft told me one time. He said he coached me, and I said, "No, whoa, hold on. Yeah, he when did. did he coach you? Yeah, he coached at Cordy. He said, Jamie, the guy liked the game so good that if you'd play summer ball, even though he knew Harold was going to be a Three sport yeah. athlete at non central. He took him on his Cordia travel team. Yeah, he did, man. Uh, and that's what me and, and Joel was talking about earlier today. Was you know he took and Joel was throwing names around. He's probably and he started laughing. Like, you probably don't know him, but he's from Elkhorn City, or he was from Chevy Valley, or he, he this kid played here. And Joel's going back and forth. And I was like, how about I just say that these kids from the because I don't want to leave anybody out because Joel and Steve and him knows everybody, um, and a lot of them still coaching and. and you know, you'd like to think that some of them's coaching because of Coach Mountain over at Lodge Creek, man. You know, he coached not only high school players, but he coached T-ball, Little League, uh, Junior Pro, uh, Babe Ruth. He coached it all over. i tell you how big of a coach. He even had a batting cage in his backyard that I went to when I was 11 years old and practiced in. That's so cool, man, again, and he just loved the game and looked for ways to give back and do it right. And then there's so many of us that came through as student teachers under him. Like yeah. I said, I student taught under him and uh, learn as much about 
how to teach from him as you could have asked for, yeah. but then so many other things outside. He would just say, there's a reason why that kid acts the way it acts. Yeah. There's a way to approach that kid. I, I tell this story all the time to people. There was a young man down there, and he was notorious for being kind of rowdy. And uh, uh, Mr. Melton told me, he said, you know, he said, if you can get him to where he respects you, it would be a totally different story. And I thought, now, how am I going to get his yeah. respect in six weeks? James, I went to the auction sale down there. My daddy and me growing up used to love going to the auctions. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, here's that kid's dad. Yeah. And I said, hello, my name's Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> From that day forward, that kid respected me because he knew I knew his dad. Yeah. And uh, wasn't going to get in trouble with the school principal, wasn't going to get in trouble with the, the teacher. But if he acted up in my class, I'm going to go to his dad. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> man, things were better. A lot better. You know, he uh, it was taught, Joe posted a picture a couple of weeks ago on Facebook, on social media of the field at Cordy. And he said, Dad, if you're looking down, you know, it's a be- it looks beautiful tonight. And I commented on it, you know, that I'm sure he's sitting in the dugout, his legs are crossed, and he was like, so-and-so was the best third baseman I ever had to play. You know, so-and-so was the best um, shortstop. But no doubt, made no doubt that in his mind, the best assistant coaches he ever had was Joe and Steve Mountain. He he loved uh, Lodge Creek, but he, he, lo- he loved Joe and Steve and his wife uh, and his grandkids um, more than anything. And he knew that that was a legacy, the baseball, that could be passed on. Of course, Steve went and played at Alice Lloyd College and – um, the the Meltons, if you've never been to Lots Creek, I suggest this weekend, or the April the 25th through the 27th, you drive over Lots Creek on the Cordia campus and you start talking to people about Coach Melton or, or Steve and Joel, just the whole Melton family. And before it's over, you'll find somebody that, that'll cry or that played for one of those three guys. You think there'll be any fried bologna sandwiches over there? Yeah, oh yeah, there's going to be... Uh, they had them a at the basketball season. room. Yeah, I thought it was second to none, my friend. Yeah, I think Double Quick sponsoring hospitality uh, for the media and the coaches and them over there that weekend, and um, they they've got it all lined up, man. When you talk to, like I said, you talk about some passionate people, but um, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about the mountains. I just I mean, we've been friends for years, me and Joel, and uh, was on the state uh, championship team together when we was twelve years old, and his dad, my dad, we all went to Atlanta, Georgia. And, and played, and we was 12 years old and watched the team get off the bus, I think, for probably Maryland. It looked like they was 18 years old and uh, just super, super good people. And, again, guys, we thank each and every one of you that are tuning in, those that are hitting the like and share buttons, those that are sending us the comments and so forth. Uh, Again, uh, Crystal and Caleb Anderson says, just got out of Little League softball practice and tuned in. Have y'all talked about the Letcher boys vacancy? Not yet. Not yet. That's James, coming right after this commercial. Stuff, yeah. But listen, let's take this first commercial or last commercial break. Yeah. Then we'll wrap it up, Wolfman, I promise. Uh, but with this commercial, let's get started off, James. Here's a good segue. Clint Black coming yes, to Knox County. He'll be here for the Knox County Community Foundation, the Knox County Central Speech and Debate. This is presented by Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky, April the 13th, 7 o'clock. And, James, from what my buddy Randy Thompson tells us, there's still yet good seats to be had. Yeah, he's the, I think there's still good tickets. Knox County softball still sells them. I think you can call the – Maybe the school. I'm not sure who's getting them. but uh, You could tune in in the morning, by the yeah. way. Randy's giving two away. I don't know if I'm supposed yeah. to tell that or not. But if you tune in to the Killer Bee, you might win you two free ones tomorrow. But yeah. anyhow, pretty neat deal. And uh, Clint Black going to be in the Morton Combs Athletic Complex. Let's take a commercial break, Wolfman. We'll be back in two minutes after this word from our sponsor. Clint Black. This killing time. Killing time 35th anniversary tour. Saturday, April 13th, 7 p.m., Morton Combs Athletic Center. For the first time ever playing his groundbreaking debut album, Killing Time, start to finish. Plus, more legendary hits. Clint Black, Killing Time, 35th anniversary tour. Saturday, April 13th, 7 p.m., Morton Combs Athletic Center. On sale now at clintblack.com. 
don't miss Clint Black in this special concert event. Presented by the Knott County Foundation, Knott County Speech and Debate, along with Primary Care Centers of East Kentucky. I'm Randy Thompson, your Republican candidate for state senator in the 29th district, which now includes Knott, Bale, Harlan, Letcher, and Floyd counties. Did you realize it's been 23 years since we've had a Knott County resident in the state senate? This year, we have an opportunity to put a Knott County resident back in the state senate. The election is May 21st. I'm Randy Thompson, and I'd appreciate your vote for state senator. Feel free to reach out to me on my Facebook page or thompsonforsenate.com. Hey you, it's -a me, Marcello. Are you looking for a great place to eat lunch or a dinner? Then go right now to Hot Rods. They have delicious -a pizza, cheese sticks, spaghetti, wings, a salad bar, and a more. You can eat in, carry out, or get a delivery from four great locations. Heinemann, Hazard, Allen, and a Betsy Lane. That's a Hot Rods. It's -a the best place this side of Italy. Mwah! Dr. Fran Hughes is a graduate of Alice Wood College and Pikeville's Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Hughes has spent the last 12 years serving the people of Eastern Kentucky and was most recently promoted to the Associate Professor in her department with the University of Kentucky. She's now seeing patients at Quantum Healthcare in Hazard, Kentucky, the clinic where she began her profession. While walk-ins are welcome, you can also call the clinic to schedule an appointment with Dr. Fran Hughes. Guys, again, we are at Hot Rods Pizza in Hyman, Kentucky. And again, if you haven't had Hot Rods Pizza, guys, you got to check them out. Again, you call ahead 606 785 here at the Hyman store. James, I got a new one over in Perry County. Yeah. Across from Perry Central, across the river there. The old Pizza Hut. The old Pizza Hut is now home to Hot Rods Pizza. Of course, they started off down in Allen. Uh, got a nice Hot Rods Pizza there. Open up a brand new one. In Pipeful, out from the police post, the state yes. police post, James, they had to close down. Why did you have to close down? They sold out of dough. They bought them out over there. I like it. That's a great thing for yeah. Rod and the guys. And so, again, it is. all those places to get your Hot Rods pizza, if you haven't had a salad, I guarantee you'll love it. Now, listen, we're giving away tonight two large pizzas, any way you want them, and a medium cheese sticks. That's a $54 value. Thank you so much to my friend, Tammy. All you got to do in the comment section is comment who you think UK's coach is going to be. And what we'll do is at the end of the night, I've got the certificate right here. Uh, we will write down everybody that commented. We don't have to get the right answer because I don't know if there is a right answer. But a answer. We'll put your name in a hat, and on next week's show, we will draw yeah. a winner. Give it up. That's so cool for them uh, to let us come in here and set up. They've yeah. always sponsored me, and then they're giving away pizza on top of yeah. it, brother. Just one announcement before we dive into the Letcher County Central vacancies and new hirings is that on uh, the Knott County Civic Night, April the 20th, uh, must, you've got to purchase a ticket, but doors open at 5.30. Uh, the meal will be starting at 6. Uh, all proceeds go to the Knott County Gingerbread Festival Committee, so – uh, you know, they've, re, they've really revitalized that the last three, four, five years with the Gingerbread Committee. So if you ain't got nothing planned on April the 20th, uh, come and join us at the Knock County Sportsplex uh, for the Knock County Civic Night to give out uh, several special presentations, and they'll do a live auction. But you got to get up with somebody from the Gingerbread Committee to buy your ticket. And, Jamie, before we dive into the two coaching vacancies, hats off to the new – Letcher Central Volleyball Coach Taylor Van Hoos, who got mentioned yesterday, who got hired yesterday and brought on. But now they brought in one coach, another one steps down. Coach Matt Taylor steps down for Letcher, going to take the coaching job at Shelby Valley. And, James, again, uh, those that are avid viewers of ours here know the respect and the love I have for Coach Taylor. He's done a good job over there. 
not necessarily had the best of luck. In fact, he's had bad luck at a couple different ways and yeah. handling things. But he's a competitor. He knows the game. He brings a college-level practice yes. to the teams he coaches. Oh, by the way, he's going to a place that loves basketball. And uh, that's a good marriage for Shelby Valley and Coach Taylor. I predict he'll be a successful hire over there. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Shelby Valley's got got a great basketball coach here in Matt Taylor. He's passionate about it. He, he, he develops players well. But, Jamie, Letcher now has got to replace – by the end of the season, by the end of the school year, has got to replace a baseball coach, mm -hmm. a basketball coach. They mm -hmm. just replaced the volleyball coach today. Um, you know, they've got a lot of work cut out for them trying to pull in some coaches over there. Had to hire a new tennis coach. Yeah. Had to hire, as you said, the volleyball coach. Uh, just a lot of different things. Then, uh, of course, there. the new AD, you know, uh, Jim McCauley told us he's going to retire at the end of the year. He told uh, us that, but I wonder. If he's going to. Now, if this yeah. won't change things. Yeah, I, haven't, it might. I haven't had a chance to talk to my buddy since he's been coaching. We talked mm. some during basketball season. But, uh, you know, and I want to back up, too, and say this, too, in case anybody's tuning in. Uh, I first met him when he was coaching, so I mm -hmm. do know that this that isn't is a situation where the coach was said, yeah. here's the keys and the whistle. Figure it out. You know, the guy knows how to coach. He does. But this isn't how he planned on finishing things out, man. No, you know, you're he right. wanted to uh, probably leaning towards retiring at the end of this year. Certainly wanted to enjoy all these spring sports. But in the middle of having to hire all these new coaches, he's having to coach baseball on top of it. And, you know, if you have to replace a Hall of Famer like Brian Dean at Letcher, uh, you get a class act Hall of Fame guy in my book with Jim Bob McCauley. I agree 100% with that. But, James, people don't realize what what it means once the season starts just to get the travel, just yeah. to get – uh, the the kids at their positions and to yeah. the things that go on that people don't think twice about in the coaching. No, you're you're absolutely right. They don't they don't think about the nights away from home, you know, and the hour two hours playing them before practice, the two hours after practice, uh, the night before games, the day after games, the day before games. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of work and a lot of time that most coaches they obviously we, we don't pay them enough to coach uh most of them do it for the love of the game love the kids um so my hat's off to coach uh mccauley for stepping in and and, and and taking that role and he'll do a fantastic job and i want everybody to buy into what he's doing yeah. give him your support james back to taylor though man we want him to have success that's a school that now with todd meadows we cover so it's not like we won't be covering him. It'll yeah. just be he'll be in a different district in a different region. But the Letcher Central job, James, is a pretty sweet job still yet. One of the, I think, top five jobs in the mountains. I, top I, ten at least. Would you agree with that? Man, the facilities up here makes it top five. They have got a phenomenal basketball facility. They've mm -hmm. got a phenomenal baseball field. They've got one of the best football fields that you'll find in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. They've got a great softball field. They've now put a new practice facility in up there for track and, and soccer. The facilities that Letcher Central puts in is is, is, cr is crazy because they have they have soaked the money in. So if whoever they get going up there is not going into a so-so facility, you're going into a multi-million dollar facility with weight rooms. You're going to have it all. Up there with Letcher County. Got a feeder program, Flem and Neon, yeah. right now. Uh, guys, we had some, uh, several of those kids in our all-star game. Uh, then, of course, we know the tradition at Whitesburg and then down in Letcher uh, Elementary. They got a nice uh, uh, feeder program over there. And, uh, shouldn't take long for whoever mm -hmm. comes to put their imprint in on the whoever and however they want to choose to coach that. Yeah, so interesting. I'm sure that. You know, then you get in that conversation. I don't want to talk about the conversation beforehand, but it, it's like the dark horse in the room. Anytime there's a coach in vacancy and a new coach gets hired in, transfers are going to happen, whether you want to talk about it or not. So with a couple of coach vacancies taking effect, you know, you even people don't like talking about it, but it is today's world. You know, I think that whoever let your hires, there's going to be some kids that may transfer in, may transfer out. 
And I think it'll be vice versa at Shelby Valley with with Coach Taylor going up there. I think some kids may transfer in and they may transfer out. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think Letcher Central will take their time on the coaching decision because they're passionate about their basketball and their sports teams up there. And Coach McCauley – or. A.D. McCauley and, and, and Miss Schantz will make sure they get the right person for the job. I could have had an inside track, but I respected him enough and didn't want to go there and haven't had a chance to sit down with him since then. But I wonder, James, does uh, some of the assistants become lead candidates? They've got a couple guys over there. I'm just throwing that out there as an option for them uh, that know the kids, know the program, probably could keep everything intact. That might be a route they go. Or do they knock on the door of another veteran coach at one of the other schools? If they do bring them in, that opens up another spot. I got a feeling the dominoes may start falling, my friend. Well, and all those are valid points. I mean, I don't, I don't know the connections over there in Letcher, um, but you know it, they're valid points, and and those are going to be some of the transfer kids in, transfer kids out, uh, is who does stay and who goes. Saw Miss Amanda Combs just go by. She was an all-star down at Cordia and played basketball in Hyman. Uh, when we do these live feeds, folks, you're not – and if you only if you wanted to be in front of the camera <laughs> are you going to be in front of the camera. You yeah. have to want to be. Now, if you come over and sit down and talk to us, we're going to put you we're on gonna Facebook. Put you, we're going we're to put, put a headset you on the radio. On you. Yeah. But um, this is to bring business to Hot Rods, yeah. not to take business away. So, by all means, swing by when we're doing these. And I said these. This won't be our last one, man. It's went too good. Yeah. Jamie, let's end it where we started. If you're a fan of University of Kentucky. And I am. Big, big, big fan. When do you need to have a coach? Last week. Well, I will. You can't go last week. I mean, now going forward, Patino or Cal Patino. I'm starting to get frustrated by the fact that we didn't have a plan in place. Well, I think we – We didn't. We couldn't have. Well, I, now I'm going to pose this question to you, like I did earlier on. I did earlier in the week on, on social media on Facebook. Last week, when the season was over, and Mitch Barnhart and Calipari got on and did their televised interview, did Calipari know then that he would not be back, but couldn't say anything, or did Barnhart know? Calipari wasn't coming back, but had to stay face because of the lifetime contract. He's the face of UK. The, one of one of them fibbed. There was too much pressure to get rid of him, and to the point they come up with thirty three million dollars. So Barnhart leaned towards getting rid of him. I really believe before they had their heart to heart, Cal was gone. But with that said, along comes the guys from Tyson's Chicken. Of all the places, think yeah. about that. And you Walmart. leave home, you leave uh, yeah. home of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and you go to Tyson's Chicken. Yeah. Uh, but well, but the pressure on Calipari's been there the last couple of years. It just wasn't this year's. Well, I mean, there's been a lot of people not having. You know, listen. Hey, there, hey, listen there, I, there's a story about Cal that if that was the only story, then I would say he's my all-time favorite. The things he done whenever the tornadoes hit over in West Liberty. The things he he done out west whenever they went through all those, the people that he flew on planes to get to the doctors. There's so many different stories about Cal. Plus, the man won us a national championship. However, the last five years, he's failed miserably. Well, yeah. You know, I, he, he went from an, his first seven years. I broke the numbers down. His first seven years, he had an 87% winning average for seven years. Yes, sir. The last seven years. It's like 62, 63%. Uh, you know, and everybody talk, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a lot of people mad right now. Everybody or that's Cal fans talk about what a great coach he is. I'm going to argue, and here's why I'm going to argue. You coach for 32 years. Mm-hmm. You sign multiple number one recruiting classes. You get NBA. You sign 50-some NBA first-rounders. 32 years coaching. One national championship. One. And you've bounced around. You was at UMass, Memphis, Kentucky. He's not done this at one program. Went to the NBA. He's went to the NBA. Failed miserably there. One national championship. When was the last time Kentucky recruited? I'm going to ask you straight up. I asked this earlier today in Harlan. Couldn't get an answer. When was the last time Cal went after the number one defensive guy in the nation? Oh, my. 
Probably oh, no. never. Yeah. Been a long, well, I mean, he's, just he's, by the fact that Davis was such a good uh, – and Gilchrist was such a good defender. But they was all on the same but, team. But they were, and, and, too, they were just a package all-around player. So, I don't, well, I don't know the answer. I'm going to say this, and this is going to be a statement that I live by. When Michael Kidgrick, Gilchrist, Miller, Anthony Davis, all them was at Kentucky, we could have coached that team and won a national championship. I know. I don't even know if you had to coach that team. I think all you had to do was like, are you tired? All right, hey, Miller, Next go five. go get him out. Kind of like you done when you was coaching against me over at Alice Floyd. Yeah, well, you know, I am 2-0 <laughs> against you. But you know what I mean? Like, there was the, the talent level was so high, and that team was so good. How much coaching did it really take to win that national championship? And here's the thing, too. Somebody says, you Kentucky fans are crazy because you think a guy is supposed to win championships. You're well, right. we do. Yes. If we ever get to where we're not that passionate, this won't be the program that it is. Yep. But then the second thing, James, is this. When's the last time we was in the Final Four? Yeah. When's the last time we got in the Sweet 16? We got beat well, out in the first round this year against a team that every coach in America knew what they were going to do. I think if he wins the SEC tournament, gets beat out first game in NCAA, we're not having this conversation. Gets beat out first game in the SEC tournament, makes it to the Elite Eight Final Four, we're not having this conversation. The problem is we've consistently got beat by teams that were better than. And Here, it comes down to we can't he couldn't coach X and O's. Well, here's another thing, too. I really believe the fact that he didn't put a lot of emphasis on the SEC team hurt him. James, it's hard to just flip a button and turn things on. So you go down there and you lose the first round of the SEC. You set out pretty much almost two weeks. Yeah. Ten well, days, anyway, between the first round of the SEC and the first round of the NCAA. And everybody else is playing. They're playing every night. Well, there's a reason. If you go around every conference in the United States, the ACC, the, the Big Ten, and you go around, the teams they don't that they don't schedule is SEC teams. And there's a reason because they're gritty. They play hard. They're defensive. Um, they're going to beat and bang you, you know, and everybody refers to in football, baseball, basketball, that's the power conference. It is the staple of conferences. And you're right. I don't think he paid enough attention to, he was playing night in, night out against the best competition in the country and was more worried about, well, how can we do against Duke? How can we do, I don't care how we do against Duke. We might play, we'll play them once a year. I don't care how we play against Kansas, we'll play them once a year. I want to win the regular season SEC. I want to win the SEC tournament, and I want to hang the banner from the top of the NCAA every year. That That's my expectations. You must beat. You have to beat Louisville. Yeah. Give him credit. He done it. But, oh, by the way, they stunk. They did. <laughs> they did. Uh, but he, you got to beat Louisville. You have to win the SEC. you got to win your home games. Make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Now, yeah. again, is that too high of expectations? If it is, then then this program ain't what I think it is. Yeah. Let me say this, though, now, before we run totally out of time. You need to share in the comment section yeah. who you think the coach is going to be. We will draw from that who will be our Hot Rods Pizza winner. Two large pizzas, any way you want it, and a medium cheese stick. It's a $54 value just for watching and commenting. If you share the show, that'll help us out even more. But, James, now here's my take. Real quickly, Patino, everybody says it's crazy. It's not crazy. Mark Pope, Mark Pope, if he is the guy that is going to coach, let's bring Patino and Pope. You could give Mark Pope an assistant coach's pay, and it would be a pay increase from where he's at. You bring Patino in, he don't need the money, but he'll take it for 4 or $5 million a year, give him four years, Pope four years, and then Pope gets to prove whether or not he's the next man up. Yeah. Bring both of them. No, I I can't see Pope. I mean, I, I, as, as – Vegas, I, tonight, listen. if you Google at Vegas who they think is going to be the number one, it's Billy Donovan, number I, I, one. Listen, number I, two, don't, I don't disagree with it. Two I don't disagree Pope. with that. My heart and my mind says – there's no way that we go from Calipari to Mark Pope. There, I mean, I just can't accept it. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's going – if he's the coach, I'll, I'll give him 100% support. My heart of heart wants Billy Donovan. Yes. I think at the end of the night, by next Wednesday, we're calling Bruce Pearl the coach of Kentucky. Let me throw some questions at you, okay? I'm You're ready. My buddy. Yeah, all right, I'm ready. Would you take baby boy to the Expo Center for our autograph session that Mark Pope's at? No. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I I, I just wouldn't go. 
So, and I watched him play at Kentucky. I was a fan of his when he was a player. You can't not, give him the keys to rob them. No, you can't. You're, I you're asked right. you about the Expo in yeah. Pikeville. And, and I yet said, we no. want him to be the guy that entertains yeah. the governors and uh, the crafts and the, well, uh, the Nestle's and the peanut butter company down there. <laughs> in all honesty, I would be willing to bet you could go anywhere in the country and they would be able to tell you the University of Kentucky's basketball coach over top who our governor is. Hands down. Hands down. The coach, coach at the University of Kentucky. Look at me. The coach at the University of Kentucky is the face of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. They're over top of the University of Louisville, Western Kentucky University, UPI. Anyway, the face of the, Com- of the Commonwealth of Kentucky is the head coach at the University of Kentucky, and I hope it's Billy Donovan. Now that you've looked into the camera and you've given your <laughs> speech – we want it to be Donovan, but there's two yeah. things about Donovan. I don't think it will be, though. He's turned us down twice. He, and, he, oh, by the way, James. Yeah, but we all make mistakes. We have nobody. This paper's got writing on it. Yeah. But if this paper was blank, that's the canvas that you're going to be given, yeah. whoever it is. Yeah. If you hire one of these other coaches, maybe he gets to bring his recruits. Maybe some NIL yeah. money goes to get a transfer player or two. Donovan's coming on a blank slate. He may not have a player return. On the list of coaches, who do you not want? I didn't want the guy from Baylor. I wrote the big article, put all the Scott time Drew. in. He, it blew up on Facebook, yeah. and I thought, please don't let people think I wanted him. But did you see if he came, if he would have came? I don't care. What could have potentially been the, the recruiting class? He's more boring than Mark Pope. And the second thing about him well, being now, boring. Now. Are you wanting an exciting coach? Yes, sir. Or are yes, you wanting a coach that makes us win the championship? I want excitement right now. Because we got to get the fan base back. Well, listen, if you want the fan base back, easy. I can make it happen in three phone calls. See, and I'll have support across the Commonwealth from Paducah to Pikeville. Who? Hey, when I go to the stage tomorrow night, uh, Reed Shepard, will you join me? Yes. Phone call number one. Phone call number two. Travis Purry from out western Kentucky, will you join me tomorrow night at the press conference? Yes. Hang it up. Number three. Trent Noah from the heart of Harlan County in the 13th region. I'm liking it. Will you come to the University of Kentucky and sit at the press conference with me? Yes. I hang the phone up. We walk in. As Ric Flair goes, we're limousine driving, jet flying. <laughs> Woo! We're coming to the University of Kentucky, baby. Who's, who's we? I, I, I don't They're, care who it is. I'm just saying, if you make those three phone calls, whoever the coach is, they pack Rupp Arena and they drive the big blue van into the midcourt and get out and everybody goes crazy. Shut it down in Chicago, yes. Billy. Shut yeah. it down. Make those three yeah. phone calls and that's fine with me. Hey, guys, we knew it was going to be a fun show. We knew everybody was going to hit likes and shares and comments. And yeah. keep commenting. Uh, if you share this, and again, that will get more word out. James, the old uh, – I promised myself I was going to find out who who sings the song, We're Coming to Your City. Yeah, Big and but, Rich. Big and Rich. Okay. Big and Rich. He knew then. Uh, we're coming to your city. Yeah. I hope to get to do next week's show in yep. Perry County. Or maybe we go to Whitesburg and have yep. Jim Bob meet us over there and do it in Ledger Ooh, County. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, him the new volleyball coach and – yeah, I like that idea. But we'll be back here on a regular basis at yeah. Hot Rods Pizza. It's just too convenient to um, us. And uh, with all that said, though, James, one phone. You made three phone calls. Yeah. I want to make one. We'll make it. Nike headquarters, Reebok, <laughs> Adidas, let's all conference call. All right. Who is a good up-and-coming young coach? Because we done proved we can't get the old veterans. I don't even care if it's an assistant coach. If Coach K had stayed at Duke, I'd have said, yeah, Coach Shire, you want to come up here to Kentucky? Maybe that's the route we need to go. Maybe. If we can't get the top three, yeah. then I want somebody that will excite us and be well, around a little while. at the end of the day, you want somebody that's going to be here, that wants to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we cut it off, let's thank our sponsors that's been with us all year since the last July, the Bank of Hyman, WKCB, the Killer V, and Mr. Randy Thompson. Derek Bolin at Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, Frontier Behavioral Health, Feud Country Leather, Dr. Fran Hughes, Quantum Healthcare, Tim Short Automotive Group, Knott County Physical Court, Dow Sloyd College, Hometown Sports Corner, and of course, Hot Rod Pizza, Pizza, Nelson Frazier Funeral Home, and Hyman Funeral Home. Jamie, final words. This is not a sob story, but this is just fact. This is a business. James and I now are making a business out of this. We need some new sponsors. Yeah. If you're interested in coming on board, let us know. 
Uh, we're looking for some sponsors to help us with baseball and softball. Then the next thing you know, we'll be in football, and then basketball season will be mm-hmm. here. We're getting ready to go dirt track racing. I'm coming very, very soon to your dirt tracks. I'm not announcing this year, so that's going to free me up to get a go this year and film some highlights and bring some races and some driver interviews here. Yeah. And we look forward to that so, so very much. As always, thanks to the Wolfman back at the yeah. station pushing the buttons and putting us on six different radio stations yep. tonight. Great job by Sean Dameron and the Bat yeah, Pats. The, the Bat Best Pats. of luck to them tomorrow. If you're yes. in Pikeville, go to Pike Central and watch them in Letcher. That ought to be a dandy over there at 6 o'clock yeah. opening pitch. Should be. Um, as always, that's Jamie Hughes. I'm James Sandlin. This upcoming Sunday, if you ain't got nowhere else to go, we'd love to have you at Montgomery Baptist Church at 11 o'clock. Services will start. It's just west on 550, about five miles outside of Hyman. Uh, we'd love to have you. Services start at 11. We usually get out by about 1230. Um, and if you can't make the morning service, you can always join my good buddy, brother Jamie Hughes here, pastor at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Does afternoon service, starts at 2 o'clock, and it's on East 550. Um, him and his congregation would love to see you at Lighthouse Baptist Church because either where, either place you go, you'll surely find God's love. One of my really, really good friends, uh, uh, his grandson got saved at your church. He'll be baptized in two weeks, and so you gonna let me sit with you? I'm coming, brother. Down. You could come and sit with me. We had Can't three. Making- we had three young people get saved at church, and when that fires me up, Matt, like UK Jamie. Hughes. Then a fourth one, of course, and I'm so proud of him. And uh, he'll be baptized at y'all's church in two weeks. We're getting down there, and we had a young lady get saved this week, so she'll be oh, baptized yeah. at our church yes, this coming week. And get out and go to. We got so many good churches. Yes, and, sir. Uh, get out and go to them. Take your family, mom and dad, bring them up in church, and. Uh, we promise you the Lord loves you, and uh, he's, he's great all the time. Absolutely. That'll wrap us up, though. You be real good sports fans, and we'll see you around the corner. On Hometown Sports Corner. Good night.